The dictator will be considered much worse by those who have watched Sacha Baron Cohen's career slowly decline over the years. Even limiting ourselves to major film releases, we saw him go from the great Borat to the derided but liked by me, Bruno, to this. The dictator, like Wanderlust earlier this year, has perhaps unfair expectations heaped upon it, considering what Cohen has given us in the past. The dictator's plot concerns Admiral General Aladdin, the leader of the fake country of Wadia. He's a, well, he's a dictator, and he goes about his business shooting Jewish people in a Wii game and ordering the beheading of anyone who looks at him the wrong way. He makes his way to an America to give a speech at the UN, but is betrayed and finds himself lost in New York. He ends up falling for a liberal, played by Anna Faris, who doesn't recognize him after his beard is shaved. But the movie didn't really work for me. I found that the trailers showed off many of the film's best jokes. The audience at the screening seemed to love it, though, so it just might be worth the price of admission. I wouldn't personally recommend it, if for no other reason than the fact that it doesn't do much with a great supporting cast, consisting of Fred Armisen, Nassim Pedrad, Ben Kingsley, and many more. I don't care what happens to the city, citizens of Wadia, any movie that wastes a John C. Riley performance is surely guilty of war crimes. Yeah, um, I, I think you might have, might have liked it a little bit more than I did. I, I thought it was horrible. Yeah. And I, don't get me wrong, I really enjoy um, Sacha Baron Cohen movies, and I really enjoyed Borat and Bruno, but I think my favorite part about those movies is you see the reaction from the people that don't know it's a joke. Like, they right. really think this is happening, and you're like, oh my God, that's so uncomfortable, and that's why I like them so yeah. much. But this was like taking that out and you just have the joke. Right. But it's not funny anymore because that's not there. And it was like I was waiting for these funny jokes to happen. And his comedy just doesn't work. In fi I just don't think it works in a fictional narrative. Yeah, I think one of the bigger problems is that um, with the comparisons that those two movies are more critical of America um, and Americans, which I thought this movie was going to be, and it's mm -hmm. really not. I thought this movie was going to take the angle of um, discuss, looking at how we've become very anti Middle Eastern and how we just hate people, you know, who are Muslim and all that kind of. I thought that's the angle it was going to take, and mm -hmm. I thought, oh, that's a really interesting angle. But instead, it's made kind of dictators and just, you know, silly voice. It's more of a silly movie than a smart movie, yeah. which Borat and Bruno to it. Which his movies are usually are. really smart. And I know um, you said before that. Um, the, there was this one line at the end that was very, um, like, it had a lot of meaning to it. It did have a lot of, like, smart comments in it. But um, that was it. And I don't think that one part in the end of the movie was enough to redeem the entire movie, especially because there were so many, like, long pauses and, like, awkward lulls and jokes that didn't hit as hard as they should have. And it just made me feel uncomfortable in the wrong way, not in the, oh, my God, what's going to happen next yeah. kind of way. Yeah. Well... And that's all for this Price of Admission feature. If you like the review, show us some love on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Tell us what you thought of The Dictator, the way Sasha Baron Cohen's career is headed, and let us know how you think this movie compares to the other big comedies we've seen this year. Thanks for watching. <laughs>